Hey, what's up everybody? It's Nicole back again with another painting video. Um, and today's video, I'm going to talk about something that everyone's kind of curious about when I tell them what I do for a living, what I do for full time. And that is how do you make money as an artist slash how to start your own art business. So I feel like everyone's really curious about this and you either think that artists are just painting all day and selling work in a gallery or people just handing the money or you're kind of mystified by how artists make money from day to day and um, it's not as complicated as you think and it's a lot more achievable than a lot of people will think um so let's get right into that so we're going to go ahead and I'm, i've kind of broken this down into a few key steps on how to make money as an artist how to build your own brand as an artist and how to start your art business so Stay tuned because I'm going to be talking throughout the whole video on how to do this, breaking it down for you guys. I know I don't have a lot of followers online, but in real life, I've built a steady clients, um, a steady form of income as a full-time artist. Sorry, that was my sister. She felt the need to uh, input, I don't know what that was in the video. I have a twin sister, for those of you who don't know. She's really cool. Her name's Rachel. Maybe I'll, I'll do a painting of her next or something. She's pretty cool. Anyway, so a full-time um, art business, and I'm a fashion designer and an artist, so I kind of go in between sewing and art, and this is what I do all day, every single day. So I'm going to kind of lay out how you do that. There's five kind of main uh, ways to do this. So I'm going to start off like kind of in order of how you should be doing it or how I did it at least. I mean, there's a million different ways to do things. I'm not saying if you're not doing these things that you're dumb or that you're never going to make it, but this is how I do it. Um, and I'm not, by any means, I'm not the most successful artist yet, but I'm still pretty young. I'm only 24 years old. So um, I think as I grow, this is something that's working and I've already seen a lot of growth. So maybe you guys can also um, see if this works out for you. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about today is your brand. And this is the most important thing. And I don't mean a brand as in like Coca-Cola or a product, as like in yourself as a brand. Now, all those successful Instagram pages, YouTube channels, they have consistency and an aesthetic and something that is known as the brand. So you can either brand yourself as a person or you can brand um, like an aesthetic or your artwork, your channel. And this is something you should be doing. So consistency and how you want yourself portrayed online, how you want yourself portrayed to clients is your brand. So this is something as simple as your art style should be pretty consistent. So if you're the kind of artist that like you're constantly changing your style and everything looks incohesive and it doesn't really make sense together, this is something you definitely want to stop doing. It's okay to be um, experimental and to try out different things, but you definitely, you want your artwork to, to be consistent, to look like it pieces together, to everything to kind of match in a sense that I could walk in and pick out which pieces are yours. It has a kind of a style and signature that's yours. And that's when you know that you're developed enough as an artist that you can start actually monetizing this skill is when your art is consistent and stylized and it's yours. So that's your brand. Um, and this should highlight your strengths. And you also have to kind of pick what you do. So a lot of people try to do everything um, and it, it's kind of confusing to a client. It's like too much at once. You want to pick one thing you're good at. So I do a lot of portraiture, a lot of uh, realistic slash illustrative kind of surrealist paintings and this is what I do but there's some artists who specialize in really cute animations and some artists are anime artists and some artists are strictly fan artists and some artists are cartoonists and they do a lot of um, action posing and backgrounds and all this kind of stuff. So you got to kind of pick what you want to do, what your segment is, and then just do that really well. The second part of your brand is building your websites and social medias around this. So everything is consistent, consistent color themes, consistent post timing, um, all your content should be matching and this will help people get a sense of who you are as an artist, what you want, what you're trying to achieve and they can align themselves better with you as a person, as a brand if your imaging all matches up and makes sense. And then the third part of this is professionalism. So my recommendation um, is to always be kind online and to always present yourself um, in a positive manner with professionalism and with... Um, dignity now some people don't do that some people are kind of their brand I guess would be having attitude being sassy and I guess completely up to you but I always feel like especially in the art community people are going to gravitate towards you a lot better if you're being kind so I'm not saying to be fake though like be honest be realistic but just 
be kind, be positive, because it's hard to always be listening to people complaining nonstop, but people will connect with your brand if you have something positive and kind to say and to contribute. And I feel like this is why a lot of people um, are into certain brands. So the next part of this, and it kind of flows in, so number two in you're building your own brand is networking. So you have to be super, super into talking to other artists, making other art friends, making connections in the industry. And this starts pretty slowly. Um, this could be attending conventions and shows, attending art galleries, staying active within the local communities, and then reaching out to people while you're there. I know a lot of artists kind of fall into the antisocial category, and that's so hard, but just work on small connections. If you're really shy, a great way to do this is through social media. So reaching out to other artists to do collaborations, commenting on their posts, adding them back and doing all that kind of stuff will help build you and make you something recognizable within the art community. Okay, so the third part of this after you set up the first two is kind of like I call it the side hustle. So I have other jobs that I did before I could work full time in fashion that would sustain me until I was... Uh, secure enough to be doing this full time and I still do one of them I teach art as a day job and this helps me still be creative and still be an art while still making money and being able to contribute back into my art so have your side hustle and you could keep it in the creative field but you need something else to rely on and save up money if you're going to do art full time for when commissions are low or you're not selling pieces and you want to make sure you have a backup so this comes into the fourth part and this is so important commissions and art sales so you want to be joining a lot of websites for selling art like etsy like redbubble like all those kind of online websites and you also want to be checking kijiji and indeed and linkedin and all those places for art postings freelance art postings and people who are looking for artists and you want to be contacting these people and keeping in touch with them because this is how you're going to build your client list Now, your clients, you should think of them like long-term relationships or lifelong relationships because once you've made a client happy, they're going to keep returning. So you're going to build and build on these clients until you no longer need to be doing your side hustle or your day job unless you love it and you like doing it. So this is the key. You could have one successful year building lots of clients, working with one big person who's going to kind of get you out there and they're going to lead you to new opportunities. So think of every client as an opportunity for either a repeat client or more clients. And you have to constantly be on the hunt for that. And sometimes that means doing art that you don't necessarily like, that's not necessarily up your tree, but it's okay because think of your personal art as something you enjoy and your client work as something that's going to bring you to an end goal. So let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. If you have anything else you want to add, if you want to hear about something more in depth, I just kind of wanted to keep it short and sweet for today. So as always, if you like my videos, go ahead and like and subscribe and please hit the notifications so that you always, always see when I upload. Thanks so much, you guys. and See you next time.